the age of Aquarius. When the moon is in the seventh house and Jupiter aligns with Mars, then peace will guide the planets and love will steer the stars. This is the dawning of the age of Aquarius. The zodiacal ages are determined by a cosmic phenomenon known as the precession of the equinox. Each year, the spring equinox moves slightly against the backdrop of the heavens moving approximately one degree every 72 years, or 30 degrees in approximately 2,160 years. It completes a full cycle in about 26,000 years. Understand this is a rough approximation. The real measurement of an age is marked by the time it takes the spring equinox to move through the actual star groups of a particular constellation. The movement of the zodiacal clock is backwards through each constellation. Hence, we have the age of Pisces first, followed by the age of Aquarius. The last 2,160 years found us in a Piscean age, as the fulcrum was in Pisces previous to that. The elliptical pointed towards Aries. It can get a little confusing to the layman, because there have been a few changes in the original calendar from which all prophecies and cosmic calculations originated. We will explain more in a further chapter in this work, i.e. the manipulation of time. We entered officially into the age of Aquarius in January of 1997. Looking back upon humanity's experiences during the age of Pisces, we reflect that Pisces as a personality is usually the martyr of the zodiac. And when in a negative energy influence, Pisces is the immortal victim, the one who sacrifices ego and dreams for earthly obligations. On the upside, Pisces surrenders the earthly pleasures for higher aspirations such as art and spirit. The greater good and striving for divine values is always very important to Pisces. It is calculated that approximately 2,000 years ago occurred the birth of Yeshua ben Yosef, or Joseph. He was also known as Yeshua Kois, <laughs> Kriost. That's spelled uh, C-R-I-O-S-T. Jesus Christ. Now, this individual was destined to become a great master, one of many, who, like Krishna, Buddha, Ramayana, Quetzalcoatl, Amaru, Deganueda, and other masters before him, radically changed the views of humanity towards realizing its spiritual truths. His history and ministry here in the Americas has yet to be fully realized by those of European influence. Though Yeshua's perceptions of sacrifice may not have been followed in the ensuing centuries, they were certainly foremost in the minds of the people. As we are seeing the age of Aquarius unfold, we are observing a unilateral search for the divine aspect within humanity, becoming more personalized. Brotherly love, 
brotherly love, love, <laughs> love, global communication, quantum logic, and the pursuit of divine reasoning are but aspects of our merging into the influence of Aquarius. Ooh, that great water bearer, huh? The emergence of the computer and its becoming an intricate part of our lives also falls under Aquarius. The internet, along with its networking capabilities, is perhaps the most Aquarian invention to date, affording us the ability to instantly connect all over the world. To our ancestors, this would have seemed as possessing godlike communication skills. Now the age of Aquarius comes into its own, and we are making yet another quantum leap as we enter the digital age, where we will learn through experience to move at an even faster pace. This is being introduced to help us speed the very vibration of thought and being. We are presently standing witness to a universal raising of awareness of the God within, the God I am. And this is most definitely an Aquarian attribute. Violent revolution and dramatic upheavals and radical change within all structures of our humanity also seem to be attributes of the Aquarian age. We could say that the age of Aquarius, that it is indeed the, air quoting, Plutonian era, but not in the sense the classic Greek philosopher had in mind when he wrote about utopian existence. No. We are in a time when, where everywhere we turn, we are witnessing as well as experiencing Mass destruction. I'm gonna hold. Take a knee for a moment on that note. We are witnessing and experiencing mass destruction. So are we really leaving nothing for the youth but the proof of destruction? Those are uh, Trevor, Trevor Hall's uh, lyrics. I'm not sure why. I can't remember what the, the song is called. Oh, it's a good song, though. We are experiencing almost global upheaval on every level and humanity is in the midst of the chaos. Enlightenment is arriving side by side with regressive and sometimes violent reality. Therefore, the image of divine beings arriving from the golden mists of the clouds is not exactly what is unfolding. We have rather the image of a cloud of a subtle holocaust which changes everything in its path. Aquarius, it would appear, entered as the warrior wizard. Prophecies about the age of Aquarius seem to have to do with earth changes, the consequences of catastrophic weather, cataclysmic occurrences causing dramatic and decisive change. Apocalyptic occurrences, it would seem, are very Aquarian, as is our romance with them. One would hope the millennial fantasies we are seeing played out and the consequences of humanity's dreams of destruction would die out quickly, like the raging of emotions in our adolescence. Here we are. 
Technology has become a combination of both the monster and the deity, woven into one. We are struggling daily to keep up with the speed of delivery of our computerized information sources in what is developing into an almost instantaneous occurrence. Whoa! There are no more secrets. And everyone, including the once infallible government, has left fingerprints at the scene of the crime. Oof. That's some beautiful truth right there. It's ugly, beautiful truth, it's, but it's truth. We are dealing with what appears to be a time of science fiction reality as we witness the effects of genetic modification of our food, as well as our bodies. In our endless search for immortality, we are witnessing on television the open cloning of man and beast, exercised from our divine right. Diseases are rampant and out of control and we are even attempting to control the global weather. It's time we talk about the weather. I'll tell you what I, what I know as an GNO. The earth is quite alive <laughs> and she doesn't take kindly to mankind, kinds of man, tampering with her natural order. Hmm? But if our hearts beat to the same frequency as the Earth's heart, we individually and collectively, as everything is connected, we can change that. You can change that. I can change that using the heart as the remote, so to speak. Anyways, I digress. All of this, while we are dealing with what is being presented to us in an inevitable environmental poisoning of our entire planet, we are thus poisoning ourselves and, and a rising tide raises all ships. We are all a part of this. A tangible end to life as we know it physically. No wonder our stress levels are up so high. One other feature of Aquarius that deserves our attention. That is the relative lack of emotion and compassion of this sign. Watery Pisces, alas was awash with emotional storms, but too cool Aquarius is noted for its attributes of cool logic and enjoys being aloof to the point of rudeness. While preoccupied with self-adulation for its reason and rationality and the self-worshipping of its intellectual and technical prowess, Aquarius is a thinking sign, not a feeling sign. That translates into the fact that Aquarius is a male-oriented energy, male-oriented energy, not a female energy. Therefore, mankind in this age of Aquarius has within its consciousness the tendency for slipping into apathetic reality potentials. It's not where you want to be. Nope, don't do that. Don't slip out and out of those apathy. Apathy is poisonous. Get out of the apathy. Let's change the potential, the narrative. Boom, boom. A little lack of apathy and some boom, boom. Raise the vibration. Now, if we neglect our better half, our feeling half, the emotional part of us, we could wind up like those who come from the stars. We call, air quoting here, the greys. I don't want to be like that. Mm -mm. 
we could turn out the, like these guys, yeah? And evolve into a race that eventually dies off from our own lack of exercised emotional capabilities. Allow yourselves to feel. Feeling <laughs> is healing. <laughs> Even if it hurts. Could this be the reason we are seeing so many passionate yet ultimately emotionless temporal relationships that are capriciously formed in the cyber reality of the internet, as well as the overnight rise and fall of information gurus. Hmm? Could this be a sign of the times? The age of Aquarius definitely has its problems before it. We as humanity must endeavor at all costs to exercise our humanity and follow a path of compassion, love, forgiveness, and reconciliation. This for the sake of the unification of our divine aspects and the awakening to the oneness of it all must be if we hope to achieve any degree of divine realization. It is called walking in balance. If we do not choose the higher path, the prophesied golden age of Aquarius could become the darkest hour we have ever endured as a living thinking species. We are advancing in our mental abilities. Yes, that is certain. But without the balance of heartfelt spiritual awareness and the development of a foundation of strong feminine attributes, we will only evolve into unbalanced gods of the lesser kind. The following is an article from CNN News taken from their website in January of 1997. Astrologers, Age of Aquarius dawns Thursday, January 23rd. Star, web posted at 2.22 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Here we go with the CNN News Report. An exceedingly rare planetary alignment will take place Thursday, astrologers say. For the first time since the Renaissance, the heavens will briefly line up in a perfect six-pointed star, a galactic star of David. While astronomers say the alignment is nothing out of the ordinary, hmm, never a straight answer, NASA. Do not trust them. <laughs> uh -uh. Astrologers hail the, the event as a symbolic representation of the long heralded dawning of the age of Aquarius. And across the world, events have been planned to usher in the new era. The new era, or age of Aquarius, is said to be triggered by the alignment of a series of planets, which will center on the first degrees of Aquarius and be joined by the sun with the moon opposite to them all. The last time this alignment took place was in 1475. Quite a long time ago, eh? Time in no time. <laughs> Thursday's alignment was happening between 12 p.m. and 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. CNN News. Huh. Again, of this time of the age of Aquarius, we are told in Isaiah 11.6. I always bums me out when they use the wolf. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the lion and the sheep shall abide together, and a little child shall lead them. Mm -hmm. 
the calf and the bear shall feed together upon the land, and their young ones shall rest together. Yea, even the lion shall eat straw like the ox. Holding that thought. I could not help but wonder, while reading this, if it might be a prophecy occurring to the genetically engineered foods being fed not only to the people, but to our animals these days. And then I also realized we are, for the first time in history, in the history of our planet, witness to the virtual captivity of almost all of the world's wildlife. Oh. They are even trying to control the oceans. Mm -mm. Pegasus. I bring attention at this time to Pegasus because Pegasus is playing a key role in the unfoldment of the prophecies of the Aquarian Age. Pegasus can be found within the zodiacal sign of Aquarius. This is the age of Aquarius, holding with its coming from the promise of a golden age and a time of great peace upon the earth and also of great wonders that arise out of mankind's awakening consciousness. The Stargate Files. We are told there will appear a mysterious light, which will be like a mist. This mist will engulf the entire earth much like a giant cloud. We will be lifted from the wheel of time and in the new energy, we will be unable to determine its passing. And from the center of the mysterious light, the great star would begin to emerge. The light from this star would begin to swell and eventually become brighter than our own sun. It would appear to take form as an eight-pointed star. Mm. As it comes closer and closer to the earth, it would become so large, it would block out most of the heavens from our view. There shall come a day like no other for all the creatures of earth in that moment of forever shall be as one. And man, man and beast shall communicate as it was long ago. For fear shall be a no thing where we are going. This was an excerpt taken from Last Cry, another manuscript written by Dr. Robert Ghostwolf. I highly recommend looking for it used if you prefer used books on Amazon, whatever search engine or yada yada internet bugger store. Check out Dr. Robert Ghostwolf's manuscripts. There are a few and they're all very informative. And I, I personally, the book talked to me on a shelf back in 2015. I was visiting Washington <laughs> and it's led me um, to, I'm not even sure if I have all of these manuscripts, but um, I'm acquiring them. Uh, there's a magnetism that is pushing me to acquire them and read them. voices there's power in our voice 
all of ours individually and collectively. We got this, y'all. All hands on deck. I'm rambling. <laughs> um, the age of Aquarius, the days of destiny. Through the eye and the voice of the shaman. Lots of love. Let love be thy weapon. Oh. <laughs>